Good morning, Word of Truth, J.D. Nija. Jeff Deloach. Post Chica State Breach. There goes Horn Guy. When the right time comes, oh yeah. Now is the right time. I hope you're drawing inspiration from my messages because these messages are designed to lift your faith, build your faith, strengthen you in the faith, and keep you walking with faith. Um, Heavenly Father, Yahweh, the Master, the Adonai, the ever-existent, from beginning to end, the Ancient of Days, the Father of Spirits, His only begotten Son, only begotten Son, His only, only Son, there's only one begotten of the Father, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos, Josiah, Jesh, Joshua, Yeshua, Solomon, Adam. He comes in the volume of the book, as it is written in Hebrews 10, 7. For lo, I come in the volume of the book to do the will of you, O God, and the Holy Spirit, which <clears throat> makes this story understandable, gives us the power to break these words of the Most High down and to tell these stories in the proper context. Heavenly Father, bless this message, the ears that hear it, make it edifying and faith-building to those who are seeking you, the God of the Hebrews, who will save those who believe on him. Amen. <clears throat> okay, so, um, <laughs> I was in Hebrews, and we're talking about um, faith versus the law, right? So, <clears throat> Melchizedek, Melchizedek, Melchizedek. A lot of people say a lot of different things about Melchizedek. And um, we're just going to read how Melchizedek, this priest of Salem, Salem meaning peace, that's where we get Jerusalem, Yerushalam, um, city of peace, Jerusalem, is the city of Melchizedek because he is the high priest of Salem. He's the high priest of peace. So peace is what we're seeking. And peace is not possible in this fallen world unless you have the comfort of the Holy Spirit. So um, when we think of Melchizedek, we think of the Holy Spirit coming in bodily form. In other words, we're seeing another reincarnation, regeneration of the Son. And this, this particular um, bodily incarnation of our Savior was very, very close to the Father. This was this was the Father showing himself um, as the Son way before anyone. I don't know how how deep the understanding was, but. Um, for us to imagine what Melchizedek was, um, your imagination, your your understanding of source, your understanding of power, the creator, would have to be a lot deeper than what, what our dumbed down, um, broken, screwed up spiritual minds are right now. So um, imagine Melchizedek as something beyond understanding to a certain extent. So how Melchizedek comes into the biblical story in Genesis 14, 18 is um, <clears throat> Abraham 
started fighting with the surrounding peoples. And he was fighting with, um, let's see, um, the Battle of the Kings. And it came to pass, this is Genesis 14.1, the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Arioch, king of Eleazar, Chedidolomer, king of Elam, and Tadal, king of nations. So these are, these are, before, before the 12 tribes, before the nation of Israel, these are the people that are running around on the, on the earth, um, trying to conquer, right? Um, that these made war with Bera, king of Sodom, and with Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Admon, and Shinabur, king of Zeboam, and the king of Bela, which is Zor. So all these kings of these different regions are trying to gain control. And let's see what happens. Verse 4. Twelve years they sh served Shedded the Lamer, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. And the fourteenth year came Shedded the Lamer and the kings that were with him, and smote the Rephaims in Ashtaroth, Karnan, and the Cusims in Ham, and the Enims in Shava Kirithim. So, um, this king came against some of these other kings that were probably mixed Edomites and and Israelites. See, that's that's where Black Hebrew Israelism completely goes off. Because if you go back to the beginning, um, it went, nothing was settled yet, and there there was already. Um, Israelites and Edomites, they just weren't, they weren't put under a title like these guys at GMS make you think, oh yeah, the sons of Cain turned into the sons of Edom and this, there was so many people killing and screwing and, and mixing with each other. This is what Genesis is all about. The beginning means this was before there was any form to the story. He's saying this is how the story formed. That's what Genesis means. In the beginning, there had to be um, a, a nothing to become something. So when we think of Cain turning into Edom, turning into Esau, turning um, not 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 the way these Hebrew Israelites try and box everyone in and put them in a category so that they can. Um, talk their nonsense. Um, it wasn't like that. This is this is in the beginning. There was a bunch of powerful kings grouping together under different flags, fighting for control of the area. Right? It's not. God, man, it's it's hard to explain the Bible um, when we've been brainwashed by so much of this. Cain was evil and and he killed his brother and yeah that was in the beginning everyone was killing each other that's what the beginning means there was there was going to be some left and there was some going to not be left um and they returned and came to in Mishpah which is Kaddish Barnea right that's where um Abraham was first at and smote all the country of the Amalekites and also the Amorites that dwelt in Hazazor, Tamar. So, someone already was beaten up on Amalek all the way back then. These, um, these, who were they? The Horites. So, what happened is, um, let's, let's move forward a little bit. Because it just talks about these people fighting each other for power, right? Um, and verse 10, Genesis 14, and the vale of Siddim was full of slime pits and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there and they remained fled to the mountain and they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals and went their way. So they got their asses handed to them and they, they went off and did their own thing, Sodom and Gomorrah, right? And so, um, what happened is Lot got captured, Lot's capture and rescue and they took Lot, Abraham's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. That's where we get the Lot, Sodom, and Gomorrah story, right? 
Let's lock it. Um, let me turn this around. That's where we get the Sodom and Gomorrah story where the angels had to save Lot out of there, right? So in this, in this story, let's see. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his servants, 318 men, and pursued them into Dan. And he divided himself against them and smote them in the land of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods and the women also and the people. He got them all. He got the women. He got the cattle. He got the goods. He got the gold, whatever was there. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Cheddar Lamer and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Sheva, which is the king, king's dale. The dale is the valley. So Abraham's already starting to brawl with these people. He's like, man, you, you took my, you're taking my family. And so when we think of the family of God, we think of people that stand up for each other. We stand for righteousness. We stand for each other. Um, and that's where a lot, as you go through the Bible, especially judges, you'll see the people turning on each other. And in the times of Solomon, the people turned on each other. After after Solomon, what, half the, half the kingdom took off we don't need you you kind of do so this is where it starts talking about Ab Abraham and Melchizedek so I just wanted to give you a background on what's going on right all this craziness is going on but Abraham went and, and took care of his family and this is where we see the Spirit of the Lord came down in Melchizedek to go, I like that. You fought for your family. And being that my son called, um, I, I, I will always stand for my family unless they're doing wrong. And then I'll tell them you're doing wrong. Why does my family do so well? Because they know if they do wrong, I'm going to tell them. And that's what love is, is is seeing someone go off and going, just like the Lord did to me when I was sinning. What are you doing? Um, having fun? <laughs> and then he leaves you alone for a while and lets you have your fun until it's not fun anymore. And then he comes back and says, what are you doing? Um, fucking up. Stop. <laughs> okay, okay. These are the things that, that Melchizedek, that's, that's the spirit of the Lord that once you know him, you're not afraid of him. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. And that's where... We're, the, the sin thing and the law thing gets all mixed up. People are all, these Hebrew Israelites, these camps, these Negro camps, brutal blasphemies across the board and pretending they, they love the Lord. They don't love anything except their own wicked imaginations. So let's continue on Melchizedek. And then we'll go back to Hebrews if I have time. Because where we were at in the last message, my messages follow. <laughs> they, they always bounce around to the truth, word of truth. Verse 18, Genesis 14. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, king of peace, brought forth bread and wine. What did he bring? The blood and the body, bread and wine. That's how we know Melchizedek was regeneration of Jesus Christ he brought forth bread and wine and he was the priest of the most high God so the most high God what's he what's he represent 
He represents peace. So are we living peacefully with people? Are we trying to live peacefully with people? That's where a lot of the struggle comes in is how do you live peacefully with someone that believes something completely different? And that's where the family thing comes in. As a family, if these guys are Israelites, they're supposed to be loving me to death. But they're not family. I represent the family. And that's why I go into the genealogy so hard. Because I am an Israelite. I am a Hebrew. I stand for the family of the book. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham, the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. So he saw the family tie and he went, I like this family tie. This love of family. This guy understands. He'll he'll put his life on the line for his Hebrew family. And blessed be the Most High God, which has delivered your enemies into your hand, and He gave them tithes of all. He gave them one tenth. So this is where um, we're going to do a lesson on this pretty soon. I was reading in Zechariah and some of these places where he was talking about the one. Tenth, that's going to make it through. There's there's the one third, and then there's a one tenth, and so this this opened my eyes to the fact that um, this one tenth part of the family is like a tithe unto God, and we're going to look into that and break that down, but not right now. So these tithe, this one tenth tithe is always given back to the Lord. And um, I'm thinking I might be part of that tithe. I'm, I'm gold. I'm gold that's being sent as a offering to the Most High God. As a spokesman for the family. Trying to figure it out here, people. I got to know myself before I can tell you who I am in him. I got to figure out that before I can ex explain some of these other things. All right, we're at 18. Let's see. Let's, let's move fast. I could probably get out of here now. And the king of Sodom said unto Abraham, give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. So he wanted the, he wanted the souls, not the goods. He wanted those bodies. He wanted to, he wanted to defile the bodies. Right? Sodom. Give me the bot. Just give me the bodies. I don't want the good stuff. Just give me the bodies. Just give me that, that portion, that, um, what is it? That pottage. Just give me the pottage. I'm hungry. I'm hungry for butt sex or whatever stupid thing the king of Sodom wanted. He wanted the bodies. And that's where we see these Hebrew Israelites. They're like, no, oh, you can't wear pants. No, you can't eat lobster. No, you can't do this. You can't do that. They want your body. They want you to bow under them, not under the most high. They want you to get on the corner and, and have them talk shit on you and talk you down and beat you up and, and tell you you don't know and confuse your mind. That's what they want. They want Babylon. They're, they're, they're biblical Babylon. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up mine hand unto the Lord, the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth. He owns it all. That I will not take from a thread even to the shoe latchet. Harkening back to when John said, I will not even have the ability to unlatch his, his sandal. He's, Abraham's saying the same thing. I, I'm, I'm trusting the Lord. That's all I know. I, I'm not nothing. I, I'm a lucky recipient of the family line. I'm blessed. I don't know how it happened. I just, I, I guess, I'm just right. Right? That's what he's saying. Um, that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say I have made Abraham rich. He's like, I don't want your shit. You can have it. 
I, I, don't, I don't get rich off of you, King of Sodom. I don't get rich off of bodies, GMS. We don't get rich off of bodies, you Sakari, ISUPK, IUIC. It doesn't matter, matter how many Negroes I have on my plantation. That's wickedness. You're the new slave owners. Great Millstone and you camps, you guys are the modern day slave owners. So let's move on. Let's go back to Hebrews. Let's get some happiness out of this. So then it it sent me back to uh, Hebrews 7.3. 73, that's my number. Um, Melchizedek. For this Melchizedek, 7-1 of Hebrews, 7, verse 1. If you want to study Melchizedek, it's Genesis 14, 18, and Hebrews 7-1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, king of peace, priest of the Most High God, Prince, prince of the Yasharala, prince, prince of the power, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings. He kicked all their asses, put them under subjection. Who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth of part of all. First being by interpretation, king of righteousness, and after that, also king of peace, which is king of peace. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. So this is what I was saying. He was the Most High. That was as close. That was probably the closest rendition of the Most High that walked on the earth. He was the Most High walking in flesh before before he had to send his his son. He's like, I'm not going back down there, but I'll I'll send I'll have a son that is like you people. Be be born of a woman, but He'll have the, my heart. And that's what we have to understand. Our heart has to be with him. Without father, without mother. So Melchizedek, do you understand what I'm saying? These are the things that, that a lot of people have all mixed up. It's not, it's not rocket science. Without father, without mother, without descent. He came from nobody. Melchizedek. And that's how we know the heaven, the heavenly brother, Solomon, Jesus Christ, Josiah. That's how we know the incarnation of Jesus Christ himself, who came through all these lines, the volume of the book. He was the, the new Melchizedek. He's the new king of peace. He's the new... Heavenly Father on earth. But born of a woman. He had to be born of a woman so he could understand what it meant. Melchizedek, he just walked around. He was like the high priest. He's like, whoa, back, stay back, stay back. He wasn't about anything except blessing Abraham and making sure that the story took off. And then he went back and sat down and went, let's see what these idiots do with this. And he, and he made the story. Having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abiding as a priest continually. He was made like Jesus Christ. He was made like the Son of God. 
So did the Son of God have father and mother? Yeah, he had a mother. He had a mother Mary. But his father was God. He was the power. So that's the message for today. Melchizedek is the proof, more proof that Jesus Christ is of the Spirit, not of Joseph. Because right here it's saying, he's like unto the Son of God, Melchizedek, being without father or mother. This is the same story following through. Who's your daddy, GMS? J.D. Nigel, Word of Truth. Hope you enjoyed the message. I'm out.